Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Farnham Park, where today we begin our broadcasting schedule of the NSL Championships. And uh, my name is Tim Collins, and along with me is Bob Frommer. How are you feeling today, Bob? Hi, Tim. It's uh, going to be a really exciting afternoon of softball. We've got four games coming up. And just to explain what this is all about, this is the National Softball League Championships run by the British Softball Federation. So in Great Britain, uh, mixed co-ed slopage softball, which this is, is mostly played in leagues. There are leagues in most big cities um, around the country, but there are also tournaments on almost every weekend throughout the year from mid-April to mid-September throughout the country. And the t there are teams that don't really play in leagues, but mostly play in tournaments. And they tend to, on the whole, be the, uh, the better teams in the country. So what we have, these teams come together and play in the National Softball League. And that league schedule is played over three tournaments during the summer. 12 teams in NSL 1, 12 teams in NSL 2. Eight teams from each league make the national championships here this weekend. So what we've got coming up immediately, or uh, in a few minutes' time when they get the field ready, is one of the playoff games from NSL 1, and I'll explain in a minute how that works. That'll be followed by another NSL 1 play, playoff game. Then we'll have the final for NSL 2 and the final for NSL 1. And NSL 1 is playing a, what's called a page playoff this afternoon. So what that means is that the top four teams from this weekend, we had a whole league schedule round robin that was played out over Saturday and up to lunchtime today. The top four teams are now the only teams left in the tournament. The team that finished first plays the team that finished second, and that's the game we're about to see. The team that wins this game will go straight to the final, which will be about 5 o'clock this afternoon. The team that loses this game will have to play against the winner of a game between third and fourth place, and that's taking place at the same time on another field. They'll play, and the winner of that game will go to the final to join the winner of this one, and the loser of that game will be done and will get the bronze medal. So that's how it works. So we're seeing what should be a really exciting game between the Windsor Knights, who finished top of the round robin table, and the Chromies, who are perennial champions or runners-up in this uh, competition. When they played yesterday, the Windsor Knights um, beat the Chromies, which yesterday was regarded as a bit of an upset. But then the fact that the Knights topped the table made it maybe a bit less of an upset. But the Chromies are a very experienced, determined team. And I think now that they've taken up their place in the Final Four, I think they're going to expect to get to the final game. And the Windsor Knights, who never got to the final in this competition, but almost did that last year, are hoping to go one better this year. And the other thing, Tim, which is at stake this weekend or the rest of this afternoon, is a place in the European Co-Ed Slow Pitch Cup, which will take place next year. One of the other teams, which we'll see later this afternoon, Pioneers, have already qualified for that because they're actually defending champions. They won the European Cup last year. The team that wins this tournament today, if they're not the Pioneers, will go to Europe next year. And there's one more place, and that might go to the team that finishes runner-up today, or there's other permutations. We won't go into that <laughs> right now which means that other teams might get there. But um, these teams are playing not just for the national championship, but for a place in the European Cup next year. Yeah, so there's a lot riding on <laughs> all the games and all the activity that's been taken. It's a lot to keep track of. And uh, the final preparations to the field are being made right now. This game was scheduled to start at 2 p.m. We're a little bit behind that, but that's okay. The weather has been wonderful today. There was just a hint of rain yesterday, but today, the sun has been definitely prevalent. There's a few clouds overhead now, and it's breezy. The wind has picked up. However, it should remain dry for sure for the rest of this afternoon and into the evening. So we hope you get, uh, get yourself comfortable and sit back and relax and watch these games. We will have all four of the games on this field from now until the end of the day. And uh, so it's about to be a flurry of activity. We're going to have the Chromies versus the Knights. The Chromies are the visiting team. And they are going to send the following lineup. Their pitcher, Danny Gunn, will be batting first. Shia Louie, the third baseman, will bat second. Mike McDowell, playing right center field, will hit third. Maura Flett, the catcher, will bat fourth. 
John Royce, the second baseman, is going to bat fifth. Misha Sulkova in right field is going to bat sixth. Matt Tomlin, the shortstop, will bat seventh. Marketa Sulkova will play first base and bat eighth. George Bartlett, the left fielder, will bat ninth. And tenth in the order, playing left center field, is Kat Golick. Defensively for the Knights, they will have the German national teamers, in fact, the pitcher and catcher. Wolfgang Walter is throwing his warm-up tosses to Baba Herzkin, who's catching. Around the infield, Kim Miller at third. Max Zerhusen is at short. Aaron Thomas at second. Natalie Woolley is playing first base. The outfield, Neil Sylvester is in left. Kelvin Harrison in left center. Kim Hendry is in right center. And Anna Waring is in right field. So Wolfgang Walter is getting ready with his warm-up tosses. And this ball game is going to start as home plate umpire has said play ball. So we are ready. I'd like to thank everyone at BSUK for helping set up this broadcast and also for Tristan at the field, Joel and, other th and John and Bob, of course, all the folks behind the scenes helping make this broadcast possible. We are ready to get things started. And we're going to see which um, Chromies team turns up in this game. They've blown a bit hot and cold this week, and they've squeaked by in some games that they could easily have lost. They've also blown people out. When it gets down to this time in the tournament, this is when the Chromies usually turn it on. So we'll see what happens. First pitch of the game is a ball. One ball and no strikes. Danny Gunn, the opposing pitcher, and he looks at a strike. One ball and one strike. The next one from Walter. There's a ground ball right back to him on one hop. Easy play to first base, one down. The Chromies rely on Danny Gunn as a leadoff hitter. His uh, on-base percentage is really high, so um, it's going to be a bit of a blow for them. So and now Shia Louie. Uh, the difference between a productive inning and a quick inning is so it can turn on a dime, you know, an out like that, a leadoff out could set the tone as Shia Louie laces a base hit into left field. Grabbed by Sylvester, he gets the ball back into the infield quickly. And Louie is at first base with a hard single. Shia Louie is probably the best or one of the best uh, women hitters in the slow pitch game here. Quite capable of putting the ball out of the park as she's done uh, several times this weekend, but that was a nice base hit. Now Mike McDowell. Looks at a ball, one ball, no strikes. McDowell also had a couple of bombs this weekend. The wind, by the way, is blowing out. So let's see what happens. Walter trying to keep those pitches down and away, and he's behind two balls and no strikes on McDowell. Right-hand hitter stands in the back of the box. A chopper to third. The play by Miller goes to second. They get the force there and no relay throw. So Louie is retired for out number two, and McDowell reaches on the fielder's choice. We can take a quick look at the replay on that one as Maura Flett will step up to the plate. Knights are going to have to uh, field well in this game. That was a nice play to get the force out, keep the inning under control. Pitches a strike to Flett, two outs and nobody on, excuse me, one on. There's a hot shot hit up the middle, gloved by the shortstop. Zerhusen, a left-handed backhand flip and he gets the force at second base and boy, that's one of those rare plays where a left-handed shortstop actually has the advantage to flip the ball in that direction to get the force out. So three outs, only one base runner reaches. And now let me give you the lineup for the Knights as we're going to go to the bottom of the first inning. No score between the Chromies and the Knights. That was a nifty play by the shortstop, Max Zerhusen, who, by the way, is going to lead off, followed by... The left center fielder, Kim Hendry, batting third, Kelvin Harrison, the, the left, excuse me, the left fielder, as those balls banging right up against where the microphone is, in case you're wondering why, how loud it's so loud. Natalie Woolley will bat fourth. Wolfgang Walter will bat fifth. Kim Miller bats sixth. Aaron Thomas, seventh. Baba Herzkin, eighth. Neil Sylvester, ninth. And Anna Waring is going to bat tenth. And the lineup for the Knights probably has a little bit less raw power than the Chromies do. A little bit less um, ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark, but they will hit singles, they'll hit doubles. They beat Chromies yesterday doing just that. And they had a really good defensive inning in the top of the first. It was a quick top of the first. Nothing across the board for the Chromies, and now the Knights 
As you mentioned, they've never made it into that final game. They came really close last year, and they're trying to punch their ticket this time as Max Tsuhusen steps up. Danny Gunn, first pitch. That one flutters all the way across too high. One ball, no strikes. And that's a strike, one and one. Tsuhusen, right-hand hitter. Kind of awesome. Kind of unusual to have a left-hand thrower that's a right-hand hitter. As that last pitch was inside, two and one. And ball three. Three balls and one strike. Nobody out. Bottom of the first, no score. And there is ball four. So Husen draws a walk. And that is exactly not the start Danny Gunn would have wanted in this game. Both these teams are stuffed full of national team players, um, not just British, but of course German national team players on the Windsor Knights. It was Kim Hendry, and that's a ball, one ball, no strikes. At Sir Husen, and then Wolfgang Walter and Baba Hetzkin, the three national teamers from Germany. The pitch is a strike, one and one, to Kim Hendry, who is the left center fielder. And ball two, Danny Gunn. Trying to just nip that outer edge, just the lowest part of the strike zone. Couldn't quite get it in there, the count. Two and one. And Henry swinging away, hits a pop fly to shallow right field. Sulkova can't get there, the ball drops. Crossing all the way to third base is Tsirhusen. As Henry is safe at first base, first and third. Take a look at this on the replay. It was the pitch that she popped up, John Royce, the second baseman couldn't get there and it fell in front of Misha Sulkova. So first and third, nobody out for Kelvin Harrison. And a very promising start for Windsor, which is exactly what they needed to get their confidence up against the Chromies. Ball one to Harrison is too high. Denny Gunn trying to find the strike zone. He's been falling behind. That one too far inside. Looked like a little knuckleball action on that one. Two and oh the count. And that's a strike. Three balls and no strikes. Uh, excuse me, two balls and one strike on Kelvin Harrison. Now it's three and one. Natalie Woolley is on deck. And a walk means a run here. And that is ball four. And of course a walk advances the base runner two bases. That makes it one to nothing Knights. As Tsuhusen comes over to score, Hendry will go to third, and Harrison gets two bases on the walk. That's the rule. And still no one out, so um, could be a beginning here for the Knights. Natalie Woolley takes a ball, one ball, no strikes. Second and third. That's ball two. And Danny Gunn looks like he's really trying to find that release point. There's the 2-0. And ball three. Wolfgang Walter on deck. That's a strike. So we have a full count now. Runners on second and third. Nobody out. One nothing Knights. Bottom of the first inning. And that's high ball four. So base is now loaded. Third walk in the inning. And Wolfgang Walter guy who has sent many uh, softballs into orbit is going to try to put a big fat number on the scoreboard right now. It's one to nothing. Knights leading, bottom of the first. Nobody out. Infield back. Outfield is standing with their backs against the fence. And that first pitch is a strike to Valter. There's a fly ball deep to left field, and that's going to disappear. Grand slam home run. Makes it 5 nothing. A grand slam home run off the bat of Wolfgang Walter. And this is a nightmare start for the Gromies. Um, Danny Gunn really struggling, pitching three walks in the first inning, and slow pitch softball, you just can't do that. Their alternative pitcher is probably the shortstop, Matt Tomlin. Yeah but they're going to stay with uh, Danny for the time being. Well, it's a new beginning of sorts. Base is loaded, but nobody 
out still. And the hitter now, Kim Miller. That pitch is a strike. That shot off the bat of Walter was actually slicing back towards center field. He hit it with backspin. There's a ground ball to the right side. Fielded there by John Royce. He throws to first in time. And that is the first out of the inning. And that will bring up Aaron Thomas. And that is the sixth batter of the inning. So, uh, so yeah. the Chromies are quite capable of overcoming a lead like this, but it will certainly give the Knights confidence. Aaron Thomas, second baseman, steps up. One out, nobody on. And that pitch is inside for a ball. 1-0. Yeah, the walks have really hurt Danny Gunn in this inning. He has issued three of them. And he's throwing a lot of pitches short, which means he, as you said before, the release point isn't there. And that's also, you know, partially, I imagine, a fear of leaving it right down the pipe in the, in the most hittable zone. You want to touch the strike zone, but you don't want to lay it right in there. And now... Thomas stepping way up in the box. And he takes ball four. That is the fourth walk of the inning. One out. And Baba Herzkin steps up to the plate. Infield going to look for a double play. Uh, John and Royce is coming into pitch. Yeah, so Danny Gunn is going to switch positions. So Royce goes in to get the face mask. And John has pitched a number of games this weekend for Chromies. The, the other pitchers we said would be Matt Tallman, who's currently at shortstop, but uh, they're going to see what John can do first. Now pitching in slow pitch, for those that haven't played it, there, it's a lot more difficult than it looks. <laughs> it's about placing the ball perfectly, and sometimes it's about strategizing, knowing what the hitter is looking for and trying to go away from their strengths. Similar to how it would be in fast pitch softball or in baseball, but it's just done in, it's, it's a completely different motion from what players of those two sports are used to. And, and you know as a slow pitch pitcher you're going to get hit. What you're trying to do is limit just how well yeah. bat meets ball. So now Baba Hetzkin, and that pitch is short ball. One wind really whipping around now. Runner on first base is Aaron Thomas. There's one out in the inning. That's a strike, one and one on Hetzkin. I mean, the wind certainly isn't helping the pitching. Yeah, it's very unpredictable. That pitch is ball two. We are in the bottom of the first inning, five nothing Knights. And the pitch from Royce. Smacked to right field, and a nice belt-high catch. I believe that ball was caught, however. Yeah, and it's going to be a double play. How did the runner advance to third, <laughs> third Tag, on that? Tagged up. He uh, was, uh, okay, I didn't see where he was. I couldn't see for sure if the catch was made. The catch was made, catch correct? was made. Okay. It must have been a tag up otherwise. Well, meanwhile, there's a line drive down the left field line. It's a base hit. And Thomas will come around and score. As Sylvester is on his way to second base, he's got himself an RBI double. It is now 6 nothing Knights after that bit of mild confusion. The Knights are, they're adding on. Um, as we said before, Chromie's gonna overcome leads, but the bigger the lead gets psychologically, the more difficult it is. You've got a mountain to climb. So Anna Waring, now the 10th batter of the inning. They have rounded out the lineup. And the pitch is grounded on a couple hops right to first, fielded there by Sulkova. She touches the bag and ends the inning. But it's a very productive one, six runs for the Knights, and we will go to the second inning. It is six nothing, Knights over the Chromies, live from Farnham Park. We'll be right back. Baseball Outlet is BSUK's preferred equipment partner for all your baseball and softball equipment needs. Visit baseballoutlet.co.uk and they'll get you and your team sorted. One go, one go. 
So we are back and ready for the top of the second inning. With the Knights having put a six spot on the board in the bottom of the first inning, the Chromies now will send five, six, and seven. John Royce, Misha Sulkova, and Matt Tomlin to the plate against Wolfgang Walter. Walter is looking behind him to make sure his defense is set. And now John Royce, who started the game at second base, is now pitching. And he hits a pop-up foul back of the plate, just out of the reach of the catcher Hetzkin. Strike one. Of course, there is a, a kind of comfort zone for both both teams in this game because uh, it's being a page playoff. The uh, There's a high pop into shallow center field. The shortstop, Sarusen, makes a catch on the heel of his glove as he had to travel quite far out into shallow center field to make that play. And once again, the, the Knights defense has been really good. We're only uh, getting a bit into the game. The comfort zone for each team here is that whoever loses is not out of the tournament. They get another, another That's true, shot. Yeah. Misha Sulkova now steps up to the plate. And she skies one deep into right center field. Playable and caught by... Kelvin Harrison. Yeah, it's Kelvin Harrison. They switched positions out there. Kim Hendry was in right center field. But now Kelvin Harrison is out there. So two outs. And that will bring up Matt Tomlin. And only one base runner so far through the first inning and two thirds for the Chromies. Yeah, that was Chai Louie's base hit in the first inning. And then McDowell had replaced around a fielder's choice. That pitches outside to Tomlin. But it's always a huge boost as Tomlin hits a grounder to third. It kicks off of Miller's left arm and rolls in front of the shortstop Sir Husen. So Tomlin, who is very quick, will reach. Tomlin is super quick. I guess we call that an error on the third base uh, player. It's a very hard infield. Of course, it's been baking in the sun. So Marketo Sulkova now will step up and she hits another grounder. This time Miller fields it and throws to second. Good stretch on the cover by Aaron Thomas to get the force out, and that will end the inning. And I think you'd have to say that um, the first two innings of inning and a half have kind of been a dream for the Knights. They couldn't have gone any better. Yeah, everything's coming up roses for the Knights against the Chromies here in this first playoff game. We will take a short little break and be right back with the bottom of the second. Hit the Pitch is Baseball Softball UK's national softball participation program and a great way to bring your organization closer together. Whether you want a single day of softball fun or want to set up a league of your own, BSUK's staff and resources are here to help. For more information, visit hitthepitch.com. Welcome back to the bottom of the second inning. Tim Collins and Bob Frommer with you here. And it's back to the top of the order for the Knights against the Chromies. And this is kind of a crucial inning for the Knights in that if they can really add on here, another four, five, six runs, then it begins to get a real struggle for the Chromies. The Chromies first can uh, get a quick three outs here. They're, they're still in the ball game. First pitch was a strike to Max Zerhusen. Next one smacked into right field. And Sir Husen is aboard with a single. He takes a big turn. He's headed to second base. He will make it there. As that ball scooted along the right field line out of the reach of Misha Sulkova. And so Sir Husen is on second base. Is the mercy rule still in effect for these games? It is. Yep. And so they would love to put another crooked number up there now as Kim Hendry steps up to the plate. And I think the mercy rule is 20 after 3, 15 after 4, 12 after 5. Something like that. There's a strike one and one on Kim Hendry. Tsuhusen is on second base. Nobody out. John Royce pitching. That ball hit in the air to left center field. It's pretty deep, but playable for Kat Golick. She makes the catch. Tsuhusen tags, and he will stroll into third base easily. One away. Let's take a look at that on the replay just to... Give you another shot. See Kat Gallick go back. Nice play. 
I'd also like to give a shout out to Nat, Kush, and James, who are volunteering to operate the camera today. Thank you to those gentlemen. Kelvin Harrison. That's a knuckleball. That one drops on the corner. Strike one. And strike two is in there. So John Royce able to get ahead 0-2. That one is outside in the right-hand batter's box. One ball, two strikes on Kelvin Harrison. The next one in. Two balls and two strikes. Trying to uh, pitch quickly there, keep the pressure on Kelvin, but Kelvin didn't bite. There's one out and a runner on third, and now he's going to score as that ball is lined in the left field for a base hit for Harrison. So Husen trots across the plate, and it is seven to nothing in favor of the Knights. Kelvin took what he was given there, just lined a single in the left field. So one out and a runner on first base for Natalie Woolley. And there's a strike. Royce seems to have found the strike zone. Line shot left center field. Golic makes the catch about waist high. And Hendry has to retreat to first base. There are two down now in the inning. That's a nice catch by Cat because the ball was hit hard. It was knuckling out there. And it was hit right at her, too, which is sometimes difficult to get a good read on. Now Wolfgang Walter hit a grand slam home run his first time. Now that pitch is high for a ball. That one's in there for a strike. One ball, one strike. There are two outs. Kelvin Harrison is on first base. And you can see Royce really trying to get as much arc as possible on these pitches. To Walter. Smokes that one deep to left field. Back to goes, and it's gone again over the left center field fence. A two-run home run for Wolfgang Walter. That is... Now three runs in the inning, and he's got six runs padded in the game. That makes it a nine to nothing lead for the Knights. As Walter is gonna be greeted by his entire team. And High fives abound. And he should be because uh, he's responsible for six of their nine runs. Yeah. And uh, it's important, important for them to add on in this inning. You see that big leg kick that he's got? As the first pitch was a strike to Kim Miller. Uh, he almost winds up like a, a pitcher to hit that ball. There's a pop-up foul ground left side playable for Louie, and she makes the catch for the third out of the inning. But three more runs across the board for the Knights, and they lead this one 9 to nothing as we go to the third inning live from Farnham Park. BSUK's Academy is designed to help young players turn the off-season into an opportunity to become better, stronger, and fitter athletes. With opportunities for both baseball and softball players, as well as elite players through the Higher Performance Academy, there's a program for all skill levels. Information about this year's Academy, as well as Higher Performance Academy tryouts, is coming soon on BSUK.com. We are ready for the top of the third inning. The Knights scored six in the first and three in the second. They lead nine to nothing over the Chromies. And the Chromies will send nine, 10, and one in their order. George Bartlett, Kat Golick, and then Danny Gunn. Against Wolfgang Walter, who's pitching and has six runs batted in today. Not a bad day at the office so far. Still a lot of ball game left though. That pitch is a ball. These are timed games, no new innings after 65 minutes, I'm cur if I uh, am correct. During the round robin, there was no new inning after 50 minutes. These games are longer, and the final will be seven innings. There's a fly ball down the right field line. It's foul, and it was just out of the reach of Anna Waring, who gave it a good try. That's a strike. George Bartlett with a 1-1 count now. I guess we're waiting for... Waring to get back into position down there. Nobody out, nobody on. We're in the top of the third inning. Nine to nothing, the Knights leading. 
Fly ball to left field and deep back near the fence and a nice running catch by Kim Hendry in left field as the outfielders again have switched positions. And she caught that ball just short of the fence in deepest left center field. And that's the first out. Well, the defensive play has been great. It's been great. They're two very reliable outfielders in Kim Hendry and Kat Golick, both playing left center field for their respective teams. I think the lineup for Knights was always that Kim was going to be in left center and Kelvin Harrison in, in right center. Yeah, that was, but then they had switched last inning. <laughs> There's a line drive down the left field line off the bat of Kat Golick for a strike. That kind of play is going to be a little demoralizing to the Chromies because George really hit that well. There's a shot down the line. Foul. My Golic peppering the left field line and then the right field line. Don't forget a foul third strike is a third strike. So she has to put this one in fair territory. One out, nobody on. That pitch. Low and away, one ball and two strikes on Golic. Excuse me, the count was 2-2. Now it's three balls and two strikes. This ball hit in the air to left field, and it will drop for a base hit. And it almost skips past Neil Sylvester in left field, who had to scramble to barehanded as it hit the ground spinning and almost scooted right past him. And the bounce out there isn't great anyway with a really hard surface, so that was a nice save. Although down by nine runs, I doubt Golic would have tested to try to get the extra base. There's a comebacker off the bat of Danny Gunn. Flipped a second for one. Terhusen with a bare hand tries to make the relay throw to first, which is not in time, but they do get the out at second base. So Golic is cut down on a nice play by Max Terhusen, and now there are two outs and a runner at first base, that's Danny Gunn. And a very frustrated Danny Gunn because that's twice he's bounced back to the pitcher. That's Sir Husen has made a couple of nifty plays at short. That was almost a brilliant double play as Shia Louie looks at a ball, one ball, no strikes. Louie 0 for 1 her first time. And that one's in for a strike right in the inner corner. Line shot, and it's a fair ball. Base hit down the left field line all the way into the corner. Gunn racing around third, headed to the plate, and he will score. It's an RBI double off the bat of Shia Louie, and the Chromies are on the board. It is now a 9-1 to one game. That was a line drive right past Kim Miller down the third base line. It was hit very hard. Shia Louie's playing on a bit of a bad ankle. She turned her ankle yesterday. She can certainly still hit, but she's not going to really extend it trying to run. She doesn't have to. Now Mike McDowell. Slow chopper up the third baseline. It stays fair for Miller, and she has no play. Everybody's safe. So, an infield single. That was wise to hold on to the ball. That's really frustrating. You get a power hitter like Mike McDowell to top the ball like that, and then you can't get an out on it. Now Mora Flett will step up to the plate. First and second, Cromie's trying to rally. Pitches a ball. And the next one, that's a strike. One ball, one strike. Runners on first and second. Louie at second, McDowell at first. Two outs, swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Wow, you do not see that very often, especially not from Mo Flett. She's uh, Gives a little smile, composes himself. <laughs> two and two, the count. Here it comes. There's a hot shot back to the circle, fielded by Valter, and he throws to first in time. Excellent defense for the Knights as they are able to get out of the inning. The Chromies do get a run. We go to the bottom of the third. It is nine to one Knights over the Chromies. Live at Farnham Park.
Baseball, softball, UK's popular Baseball's Coming Home t-shirts are now available online and at Farnham Park. Visit BaseballSoftballUK.com and click the home page box or visit Home Plate Bar and Kitchen at Farnham to get yours today. Welcome back to Farnham Park. It is nine to one the Knights over the Chromies, and Tom Russell has gone into the game for Danny Gunn. He's playing second base. John Royce still pitching and dealing with Aaron Thomas. The first pitch is a ball. This is going to be another inning where the Knights are going to want to try to just keep the pressure on. Two balls and a strike. John Royce working very quickly. And Thomas takes ball three, three and one. The Knights have held Chromies to one run in three innings, but they know that the Chromies at any point can just break out. Now there's a leadoff walk. It was the walks that had bitten the Chromies in the first inning especially. But that will put Aaron Thomas on second base. And Barbara Herzkin will now step up to the plate. And that's a ball. Hanskin is 0 for 1. A little pop foul behind the plate off the screen. Strike one. One ball and one strike. Well, you certainly hear a lot more energy from these teams. They, you can tell that all the players are really invested in the outcome of this game. There's a drive driven down the outfield, right field side, foul way out of play. And we need some more balls. We'll put umpire goes to the Knights dugout to get a few. Now you can hear that wind rumbling over the microphone. Two balls and two strikes to count on Baba Herzgren. She drives that one to right center field, but it's right at McDowell, who makes the catch. Runner tags, goes to third, and he's in there. That's Aaron Thomas advancing. Good base running. So Herzkin flies out, and Thomas moves to third, tagging up. That will bring up Neil Sylvester. And that means that the Knights should get at least one run here if they don't get any more, which will cancel out the run that Cromie scored in the top of the inning. The chances are certainly high. Sylvester, who hit a home run in a game yesterday, takes a pitch for a strike. And he drives that to left field. It's caught by Bartlett. Tagging and coming home to score is Thomas. And that makes it 10 to 1, a sacrifice fly. All in all, I'm sure the Chromies will take it. It's a second out, and there's nobody on base. Score is now Knights 10, Chromies 1 on the sacrifice fly off the bat of Neil Sylvester. And Anna Waring steps up to the plate. And she slices a fly ball foul. That's out of the reach of Shia Louie and George Bartlett. Strike one. Yeah, Chromies will be happy if they can get out of the inning with a run. Knights won't be too worried. They'll have the top of the order coming up in the bottom of the fourth inning. <laughs> one strike to count on Anna Waring. John Royce from the circle delivers the pitch. There's a line drive off of the glove of Royce and into center field to base hit. And it rolls away from the center fielder, McDowell, and taking second base on the play. Anna Waring. That ball was, first it was deflected off of Royce's glove and it trickled onto the grass in shallow center field. And McDowell lost control of it and it got past both he and Cad Golick in center field. So another runner is in scoring position, Anna Waring, as you see the replay. Max Tsuhusen now steps up to the plate. Max is uh, one for one. He walked the first time up, singled the last time up. 
Here's the 1 0 pitch. Fly ball high and deep to left center field. Kiss that ball that goodbye. A two run shot off the bat of Max Terhusen. And that makes it 12 to 1 in favor of the Knights. That was a blast and a half. We've seen a couple of bombs go in that direction. And you see the line of high fives from the Knights trying to work their way into the final game. Let's take a look at this pitch again. It was right in the wheelhouse. Boom, and you could see right from the point of contact, Kat Golick just gave it a courtesy look. I mean, the Knights have only a couple of people really who can hit the ball out, and they've both been doing they've it. They've been doing it every time. So. Chromie's lineup is full of people who can hit the ball out, and uh, so far nothing. Well, they're gonna need to. If they're gonna wanna come back. Kim Hendry takes a strike. Well, there were two outs, and then that base running, uh, well, it wasn't actually, the error didn't make any difference, but you know, it's always frustrating when you have two outs and nobody on base and you can't quite get that third out. Line drive caught by the second baseman, uh, Tom Russell, who just came into the ball game. So Hendry hits it hard, but that's the third out of the inning. However, three more runs for the Knights. We go to the fourth inning. It is the Knights 12 and the Chromies 1. Looking to promote your business to thousands of baseball and softball players each year? New sponsorship opportunities are available with Baseball Softball UK, including great new signage at Farnham Park. Advertising with BSUK is a home run for your company, so get in touch today. Speak to a commercial team member for more information. We are back for the top of the fourth inning. And John Royce, Misha Sulkova, and Matt Tomlin will step up to the plate. Five, six, and seven in the order for the Chromies, who have some work to do. If they're going to want to get back in this one, Wolfgang Walter is in the circle for the Knights. And he's trying to defend an 11 run lead. The first pitch is a ball. You would think that an 11 run read would lead would be secure, but in softball and against a team with the offensive prowess that the Chromies have, it most certainly is not. There is a strike, one and one. I mean, what the Knights need to do is keep up the excellent defense we've seen in the first three innings. And Royce with a pop-up. Sir Husen backs up onto the outfield grass and makes the catch. And the frustration continues into the beginning of the fourth inning for the Chromies, one out. And you feel the Chromies are Possibly feeling the pressure. Maybe starting to press a little bit. Misha Sulkova steps up to the plate. Misha had an outstanding European Slopish Championship playing for the Czech Republic in Hungary a few weeks ago. And that pitch is a strike. One ball, one strike on Misha Sulkova. She and her sister Marketa have lived in the UK now for about 10 years, but they will still play for the Czech Republic on occasion. There's a chopper back to the circle, and Wolfgang Walter walks it all the way over to Natalie Woolley and then hands it to her. So I guess the play goes 1 3 on that, but uh, with a handshake. So that's the second out of the inning. As I look at my scorecard, only once have the Chromies had two consecutive batters reach base. Do I have that correct, Bob? That was last inning when they scored a run. That's right. And yeah, as Matt Tomlin looks at a ball and a strike, it's one This is really unusual for Chromies, but they, they are a hot and cold team. Ball two. For first four innings here, definitely cold. That's a fly ball foul, and that will make the count. Two balls and two strikes. Wolfgang Walther is pitching a nice game. He's he's varying the height. He's going inside, inside and outside. There's a ground ball to third. Picked on a short hop by Miller. She throws across. Not in time. Tomlin beats it. We mentioned before how quick he is. And his legs saved him and the Chromies from a 1-2-3 inning right there. And that will bring up Marquette Sulkova. I wanted to show the replay, but there's not enough time. So here's the next pitch. Line drive foul. Fortunately, not quite right at the camera person. One strike on Marquette Zulkova. He 
hear the, the intensity of the players on both sides cheering on their teammates. There's a liner caught by the shortstop, Sir Hughes, in a little humpback line drive. And he waited and timed his leap perfectly. And again, only one base runner in the inning. No runs. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. It is 12 to 1 nights, live from Farnham Park. Welcome back to Farnham Park. A few changes for the Chromies. Manny Estevez Sanchez goes into the game in John Royce's place. He will go to left field. George Bartlett, who was in left field, will play shortstop. And Matt Tomlin, who was playing shortstop, is now pitching. And he's going to deal with the heart of the order as the Knights have a 12-1 to lead in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's 3-4-5. and five. Kelvin Harrison, Natalie Woolley, and Wolfgang Walter. There's a shot to left field. Right at the new left fielder, Manny Estevez. And he caught it as he almost had to drop to his stomach to make that play. It was a line drive hit right at him. And he barely picked it out of the air before it hit the ground. So one out. And of course, the uh, the old baseball softball adage. The ball finds you. The game, the yeah. ball finds you. <laughs> exactly. A nice play. Natalie Woolley steps up to the plate. Also a good job by her camera guy, that is James over there. Thanks, James. He can't hear me, but he'll hear this later. There's a strike to Natalie Woolley. And Tomlin going for the high arc on that one. One ball and one strike. Now he really releases the ball with soft hands, if, that's, if that makes any sense, Bob. Watch how the ball comes out of his hand. As a pop fly, left center field. Golic calls and catches. And two down. Matt Tomlin is a, is a very good pitcher, very versatile player. He's just come back from a week in uh, Italy playing for the Meteors men's fast pitch team in the European men's Super Cup. So Matt plays fast pitch and slow pitch. He plays infield, he pitches. He can play outfield if, if you need to put him out there. And above all, as we saw last inning, he's really quick, beating out that base hit to third base where Kim Miller did everything she could, but Matt just beat it. One ball and one strike on Wolfgang Walter, who has a grand slam and a two-run homer. And now the count two and one. Tomlin, you can really see he's changing angles, arcs, and also the in and out, the depth of the pitch. And Walter, who tries to time it with that big leg kick, you know, if the pitch comes in a little flatter than you're expected, it, it can throw off your timing, perhaps. And Tomlin obviously trying to do that. Also trying to be careful and pitch around Valter, who draws a walk. So he will touch first and then continue on to second base. And the automatic walk taken by Kim Miller. So she's going she's to take it, right. That's right, with two outs. And Aaron Thomas will step up. So Miller with a walk also. Now the Chromies have yet to put a zero up on the scoreboard with the Knights batting. And here we are again, two outs and a chance to have a scoreless inning, but you're going to have to deal with Aaron Thomas and two on. A ground ball to the hole. That's through into the outfield. Walter is being waved around, and the throw will not be in time. He scores. It's an RBI single to make it 13-1. to Walter with two outs. You knew he was going to go with the crack of the bat. Kim Miller stayed put at first base. Aaron Thomas with an RBI single. 
It is 13 to one Knights. Take a look at this on the replay. It was a good throw by Estevez Santos from left field. Uh, he's had some action since he came into the game. But once, once again, the walk bites the Chromies because the walk set that up. Now Barbara Hertzkin, and she looks at a strike. Uh, there's no defending walks, as my old coach used to say. Uh, strike two. Of course, if he had thrown a strike, Wolfgang Walter could have just as easily hit it out of the ballpark and we'd have the same result where we are right now. That pitch was way short, enough so that everybody's having a good laugh about it. Two balls and a strike on Hertzkin. That's deep to left field. Estevez Santos going back and he makes, no, he dropped the ball. It was off his glove and it rolls along the warning track. Two runs are gonna score. It is 14 to, 15 to one rather. I mean, Barbara hit, hit that ball really well, but Manny was there, was in his glove. I think you have to call that an error. Yeah, it looked like maybe just before he got it in his glove, perhaps he had trouble seeing it. He's looking directly into the sun, and it looked like he flinched just a tiny bit right as the ball was coming towards his face. And that's a tough error for the Chromies and two more runs for the Knights. And what did you say that... Uh, Mercy rule was, Bob? Uh, Neil Sylvester we? steps up to the plate. I don't think we're there yet, but uh, well, this is the fourth inning, so. Yeah. Actually, we might not the be that far away. The score is 15 to one right now, so. Okay, it might be one more run. Well, Hertzkin is the runner at second base. There are two outs. Now that's a strike on Sylvester. Tomlin. Deals. A ground ball right back to the circle. He fields and underhands it to first, and the inning is over. But three more runs come across. They have scored six in the first, three in the second, three in the third, and three more in the fourth. It is 15 to 1 nights as we go to the fifth inning here in Farnham Park. Welcome back to the top of the fifth inning. It is the Knights 15 and the Chromies 1. Chromies coming to bat. And Wolfgang Walter deals to George Bartlett. And the pitch is a ball. Bar Bartlett followed by Kat Golick and Tom Russell. Russell has not yet batted in this game. And that pitch is a bit short. Now Chromies, it's an understatement to say they need base runners. There's a fly ball, right center field, and it is playable and caught by the right fielder, Anna Waring, cutting in front of Kelvin Harrison. That ball was slicing towards her anyway. But again, a nice catch, a nice play by the, the Knights, and excellent defense in this game. Yeah, they've made all the plays. And the Chromies will be very much aware that uh, they're one run away from the mercy rule. If they don't score in this inning and the Knights get one in the bottom of the fifth, and the game is over. Kat Gullick takes the pitch too high, ball one. Come on, Knights, let's go! There's a drive to left field. This is sending Sylvester back. It's over his head, and it's going to go all the way to the fence. Gullick racing to second base. She pulls up there with a double. And now the top of the order, Tom Russell, who entered the game for Danny Gunn a couple of innings ago. So this is his first at bat. Gallic is at second base. 
There's one out in the inning. And Wolfgang Walter's pitch is lined in left field. That's a base hit for Russell. Golick is going to stop at third base. Russell stops at first, first and third, with only one down. And that will bring up Shia Louie. So the Chromies at last has something going here. They've got two runners on, one out, the top part of their order coming up. Chai is two for two, single and a double. And the pitch to her is a strike called. Nothing in one. So Golic is at third, Tom Russell is at first, and Louie lines a base hit into center field. Golic will score, Russell takes a turn at second, holds on there, it is now 15 to two. Chromie's trying to mount a comeback of sorts here. First and second, only one out in the inning, and now you have the power, Mike McDowell, who has been frustrated somewhat, even though he's been on base twice. He's hit a couple of ground balls, if I remember correctly. And the pitch is short and outside. And at the uh, European Slopes Championship, McDowell was unbelievable. And he hits a ground ball over the first base bag down the right field line. That's into right field for a hit. Coming around third to score is Russell. Heading to third is Shia Louie. And McDowell stops at second with a double to score a run, and it's now 15 to three. Well, he hit that ground ball right over the first base bag. Natalie Wo Woolley playing way off the line. McDowell saw the hole and, and placed it down there. It was a really nice piece of hitting. Yeah, that's an excellent piece of hitting. Now more a flat. And she drives it into right field, and it is a base hit. It gets under the glove of Waring, and it rolls all the way to the wall. This will score two runs. Flett racing from second to third. She is there with a the triple. And at, last, at last you're seeing the Cromies batting attack the way that uh, it can be. The question is, is whether it's too late. Well, a 15 to five game now. As Manny Estevez Santos will now step up to the plate. He came in for John Royce. Well, suddenly some action here. It's 15 to 5. Well, you remember, you know, they were close to having the 15 run rule last inning. And it pitches a ball. Manny. Manny is very capable of putting the ball out of the ballpark. Flett is on third, the pitch. Line drive, base hit to center field. Flett will trot home, Estevez has a big turn, he stops at first base right there and it is 15 to six. Well, after not having more than two consecutive batters reach in the entire game, now one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive hits for the Chromies and the noise level is starting to rise from the third base dugout. Misha Sulkova steps up to the plate, the pitch. Fouled back to the screen, strike one. Knights will want to stop this here, or at least not give up more than another run or at most two. Remember this inning began with a hard hit ball that was caught in right field, a good defensive play. Could have been more damage. There's a ball outside, one ball, one strike. The next one to Sulkova. That's a strike, one ball and two strikes. There's one out in the inning. That seems like a while ago now. As the Chromies have put a five spot on the board. They still trail by nine, however. Here it comes. Sulkova serves a soft fly ball to right center field, and it drops. Will they be able to get the force at second base? No, everybody's safe. A good slide by Estevez Santos as he was waiting and trying to read the flight of that ball. It was a good play by Harrison to try to get the force at second base, but Estevez Santos able to get the leg in there just ahead of the throw. And now Matt Tomlin steps up to the plate with two on and one out. And the rally continues, seven straight base hits. First and second. Well, that would be some comeback. Line shot down the right field line, foul, strike one on Matt Tomlin. Tomlin, who started the game playing shortstop and is now the pitcher. 
Cromies with runners on first and second. One strike on Tomlin, there's one out in the inning, the pitch. That's a strike, 0-2. Wolfgang Walter trying to get out of this. And that pitch is outside, one ball, two strikes. This is the first time in the game that the Knights have had to break a sweat. There's a line drive, leaping catch, and that's a double play to end the inning. Oh, a huge play by Aaron Thomas. Huge play. That may, that may have saved the ball game for the Knights. Very well could have. Take a look at it on the replay. It was a line drive, and it was caught with a leap by the second baseman, Thomas. He flipped it to the shortstop, Terhusen, who caught Manny Estevez Santos off the bag, and that completely changes the outlook of this ball game. So we will go to the bottom of the fifth inning. It is 15 to 6 nights here from Farnham Park. Well, a very eventful half inning. We return to the bottom of the fifth here from Farnham Park. The Knights 15 and the Chromies 6. And we, we just saw a, one of those famous Chromies feeding frenzies that they can go on. Seven straight base hits, five runs, and a great play by Aaron Thomas turned into a double play is what choked that inning off. Otherwise, the Chromies were envisioning getting a lot closer. Uh, that was a... There's snatching that third out from, from the air coming down as Anna Waring takes first pitch. I believe that was a strike called. Was that a strike, Bob? I missed it. <laughs> Actually didn't see it. Okay. Well, that one was a ball. Matt Tomlin deals a strike. The count is three balls in one strike on Anna Waring. And she takes ball four. So the Knights, who need to score six runs to invoke the 15-run mercy rule, as Waring is now on first base, and that turns the lineup over. Max Tsuhusen will step up to the plate. Tsuhusen hit a home run. And he lines a base hit over the shortstop into left center field. And here come the Knights. First and second, that ball going over George Bortlet Bartlett's head. And so two on and nobody out. Here comes Kim Hendry. And I think the Knights are probably feeling a bit reprieved. Their last inning could have been worse than it was. They had a little huddle in front of the dugout between innings. And now they're coming out and get the benefit of a walk to lead off. Hendry takes a ball. Hendry is one for three today. And now ball two. It really is the walks that have done in the Chromies. It's opened up the door to the big rallies, especially the sixth spot in the first inning. Hendry takes a strike. Two and one from Tomlin to Hendry, the next one. Popped out of play, strike two. Runner on first base is Max Terhusen. Anna Waring is at second. There's nobody out. And a pop-up, shallow center field. And it drops in between the three fielders and everybody moves up as that ball had backspin on it. The bases are now loaded. Waring goes to third, Terhusen goes to second, Hendry Reaches on a little pop fly that dropped between McDowell, Golick, and Bartlett. It wasn't hit well, but it was hit in the right place. Yeah, right in no man's land. Now you have Kelvin Harrison, a possible home run threat. 
with the bases loaded. That is a ball, one ball, no strikes. And then, of course, two batters later, Natalie Woolley and then Wolfgang Walter. There's a drive, but he pulled it foul way out of here, but foul by about oh, 35, 40 feet. That is a long strike. So Matt Talman has to be careful, but of course there's nowhere to put Kelvin. Yeah. I mean, in this situation, you, all you can really do is hope they hit it at somebody. There's no reason to pitch around them because that just adds to the tally if they eventually get some hits. There's a base hit into center field. This will bring home at least one. Sir Husen is rounding, and he will head to the plate and score. Two runs have scored. It is now 17 to 6. The other runners stop at first and second. Henry is at second. Hel Harrison is at first with an RBI base hit. Waring and Sir Husen both scored on that, and so now that will bring up Natalie Woolley. Still nobody out in the inning. It was good, good batting by uh, Calvin. He had his shot at the home run, then he just took the ball up the middle. Two runs in, the rally, rally continues. I guess he, you don't want to risk hitting a pop-up that's easily caught for the, for the out. And the pitch is low, two balls, no strikes on Woolley. This is popped up on the infield, and it is caught by Mo Flett, and that's the first out of the inning. However, Wolfgang Walter will step up to the plate, and if he goes deep, this game's going to end. Walter representing run number 21 at the plate. That would invoke the 15-run rule if he were to hit a bomb here. If uh, my math is correct. There's only one out in the inning. No, they'd be one short. It'd be 20 to 6. Excuse me, right. It's, uh, see, this is why I say these things out loud so that uh, they can be. <laughs> First pitch hits him in the backside. Mo Flett says, don't worry, that wasn't on purpose. Matt Tomlin with a little smirk. And in slow pitch, you don't get to take your base. <laughs> There's no payback for the two home runs. Here's the next one. That's inside, two balls and no strikes. All right, you hit the player, that's all good. <laughs> Again, Matt Tomlin's being careful here, but a walk, walk is another run. And it would. There's a drive, and that ball is long gone. Watch it go and roll down the hill and out of sight and into the trees and, for all we know, into the Thames. That is a three-run home run, his third run, of, third homer of the game. Nine runs batted in yep. for Wolfgang Walter, and that makes it 20 to six. Another bomb off the bat of the German national teamer Wolfgang Walter. Let's take a look at that on the replay. And now the mercy rule is just one run yeah, away. Yeah, one run away. There's only one out in the inning. Kim Miller is going to step up to the plate. Okay, guys. You have to say this has been uh, Wolfie's game. Yeah. I mean, three home runs, nine RBIs, a really good pitching performance as well. Yeah. Only the one inning in which the Chromies were able to put some hits together against him. That pitch is a ball to Kim Miller. So the Knights looking for one more run to try to end this thing. And the thing the Knights will be very proud of is they gave up those five runs, came right back and scored five of their own. This is a team that's been getting better and better over the last few years, almost got to the final last year. This year, obviously, they are very determined to uh, go one better than that. Ground ball back to Tomlin, and he makes the play for the second out. And so now Aaron Thomas will step up to the plate, still two down. Nobody on base. Well, there will be a sixth inning if no more runs cross the plate this half inning. Although we should be getting close to the 65 minute mark as well. We started about 12 minutes after two. And there is supposed to be no new innings after 65 minutes. It is, well, it's 318, so this might also be the ball game anyway. Aaron Thomas at the plate. I think we have a, we have a switch. This is not Aaron Thomas. Your game. 
So it's like Ben to see Johnson, I think. Ben K. Johnson? Ben yeah, K. Okay. Johnson, yep. All right, so Ben K. Johnson, and he drives one to deep left field, back near the fence, and it is caught! It is caught! It is caught by Manny Estevez Santos, and he flips over the fence. He took a home run away. That was a sensational catch. Let's see if we caught this on the replay. I see that the camera went out just as uh, it went over. I think that that's ball game. That is the ball game. The ball game is over, but what a fantastic way for the game to end. As Manny Estevez Santos flips over the left field fence to take away a home run. The home run would have ended the game. But the game ends anyway as we are out of time for new innings. And the final score, the Knights 20, the Chromies 6. And Bob, if I remember correctly, is this the first time that the Knights have ever been in the final? And it's also the first time since 2008 that the final will not be the Chromies versus the Pioneers. Is that correct? Um, it's the first time the Knights have ever been to the final. Um, we've, had, we've had finals. We had finals that didn't necessarily involve just the Chromies and Pioneers. Okay. I see what you mean. Um, the last time that the Chromies or Pioneers didn't win the Nationals of 2008, of course, the Pioneers, we don't know what happened in the 3v4 game over there. Pioneers could still get to the final and they could still win. But this is a historic win for the Knights. I mean, this is a win that's been, they've been building towards for the last two or three years, certainly through all of this season. And it's a real tribute to them. They could take on a team like the Chromies without feeling intimidated. They clearly came out, just attacked them, played brilliant defense. I think this is a real milestone for the Knights, regardless of whether they win the final or not. Of course, they're now in the final for sure. And I think also guaranteed a place in the European Cup next year. Whatever happens in the final, the Knights have certainly made a big advance and they can be really, really proud of this game. Excellent. Well, the final score, the Knights 20, the Chromies 6. The Knights are in the final. And we will be back shortly with the next broadcast. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Tim Collins. For Bob Fromer, we are going to come back to you live from Farnham Park in, oh, probably about 15 minutes. Thanks for tuning in.